Good afternoon and welcome to Exact Tech Arena, Stephen C. O'Connell Center in Gainesville, Florida for this NCAA Volleyball Championship first round match between in-state rivals UCF and Florida State. Hi everyone, this is Tom Collette alongside Missy Whittemore. I apologize in advance for the voice. It's that time of the year. And that time of the year means, Missy, we have 64 teams coming in. Only one team will come out on the other side in Pittsburgh as a national champion. Tom, and as several coaches have pointed out, the postseason is a new season. And as we literally kick things off right here in Gainesville, everyone is 0-0 and nothing but opportunity lies ahead. And let's see who's here in Gainesville in this first and second round weekend. Minnesota, the top team, of course, hosting in Minneapolis, St. Paul here in Gainesville. UCF, Florida State, Alabama State for the third time in four years, and Florida. And of course, Florida State and UCF will kick it off. Florida State got here by way of defense. They are the second best blocking team in the entire nation, and no one does it better than that junior middle blocker right there, Taryn Canute. She was the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, the first time ever a non-Libero has taken home that honor and the first FSU player to do so as well. On the other side of the net for UCF, they make it to Gainesville by way of a huge upset in the inaugural American Athletic Conference Tournament where they took down number one seed Cincinnati and were able to avenge their only two conference losses of the season. Their success is directly tied to that sophomore right there, McKenna Melville. She was a unanimous all-conference selection. The coaches in this matchup today, no strangers to the NCAA tournament. First for UCF, Todd Dagene. 236 wins now tied for the most wins at UCF with Lucy McDaniel. And this is the first time that he will meet FSU in this setting in the NCAA tournament. And this guy is no stranger, Missy, to the NCAA. First at Arkansas, building that program from scratch. And now, hard to believe, in his 12th season at Florida State. Look at that record, stellar for Chris Poole. In his 12th season and his 11th consecutive NCAA postseason. So impressive what Chris Poole has been able to do with the Seminoles. The UCF Knights dressed in white tops and black shorts as you watch. And to our left, the Florida State Seminoles in the garnet tops with the black shorts. And your officials for the match today, Suzanne Lowry running the match as the R1 up on the stand and Darren Clark is the R2 over at the scores table. We're ready to go and here's the opening serve. Florida State will go right to the middle and a big block in the middle for Moravec. These are two great blocking teams, both averaging three blocks per set. That's a heady number. FSU will go to the outside this time and a great save in the back row by Christina Fisher. We'll call her name a lot today. FSU goes right side. It's a free ball opportunity though for UCF. After winning the joust, FSU now plays defense. Out to the outside. Well, this is the longest rally I can remember ever to open up an NCAA tournament that I've been part of, Missy. Yeah, and I tell you, the FSU proven us right. We said they got here by way of defense, and they are digging some balls early. UCF joining them. Melville tries again, and finally, McKenna Melville, second in the conference, the AAC, with 4.55 kills per set, terminates that rally. And Chris Poole said of UCF coming into this one, he said this is a team who does a really good job staying in the system, and I think that first rally was a great example of that as you saw the patience of UCF. An attack is in from the right antenna for Peyton Caffrey. Now server number 15, Peyton Caffrey. Or was that Clothier on the right side? It might have been Clothier taking that swing from the right pin, but with that swing, it'll be Peyton Caffrey who rotates Ooh. back to serve. And she is wearing a different number today, is Emma Clothier. Nice look for UCF now with a two-point lead and serve back to Lachey Harper. This UCF team, a team of resilience last year, they hosted first and second round action as a nice quick set again to Clothier in the middle. Beautiful connection there for FSU as you see that quick ball from Lily Tessier right to Emma Clothier in the middle. And she's able to split that UCF block right between the outside and the middle. Right between Anne-Marie Watson 
and Narissa Moravec. Right side attack is in the net. No, it's not in the net. I beg your pardon. It is in the net. I, I beg your pardon. As Clothier now will serve it, middle blocker position. That means no, Tom, our first look at Taryn Knuth. No, you're correct. The up official is motioning point to UCF there. Yeah, I'm confused. She pointed both ways, and now she's clarifying that. Boy, nice. The point will go to UCF. Yeah, that ball snuck through, landed on FSU's side of the net. That is going to be a point off the swing of Anne-Marie Watson there, 32 at the right antenna. She's a player who last year did good things for them defensively. She did that again this year. It backed it up with some offense as well. And she earned all, all conference honors for the Knights. Let's take another look at that play at the other side of the court. The other side from us where we sit. And it's definitely on the FSU side. You see there, and it also, white, Anne Marie Watson. It also may have gone off the antenna, but it was after it hit the block of FSU. So the swing for Watson, good, and she scores a point. Adrian L serves for Florida State. To the right side goes UCF to Sable, the lefty. Florida State returns a favor to the right side. To the outside to Melville, off the net this time, and nice up and back left from Sullivan. Speaking of nice ups, how about Cooch Manor? Finally, a kill on the left side for Morgan Chacon. And I think what we're seeing early here, Tom, is clean volleyball. And that does not surprise me from these two head coaches. You see how well-trained these teams are. They stay in the system. They're not going to error themselves out of a match. And then with that opportunity, you see FSU able to kill it down the line. Melville with the kill there off the block. Attempt of FSU. And McKenna Melville. First team, all AAC, and the tournament MVP. She had 27 kills in that yeah, tournament and final against Cincinnati. Second in the conference only to Jordan Thompson of Cincinnati, who is a player that is, stands alone, not just in her conference, but in the nation. She'll be doing big things post-college life. We didn't get to talk about Fisher in the open, but Christina Fisher, the senior out of Austin, Texas. How did she get out of Austin, Texas? That's one of my questions. 18th in the conference with 2.88 kills per set. A perfect bookend on those two outsides yeah. to Melville. Such great complimentary outsides, and that's what allows UCF to be successful against a team like Cincinnati. They can score points in every rotation. Great save for UCF just to keep it alive, and the ball will travel across the net. There's Canute. This is no balls to the floor volleyball. Wow, you're going to see again a look at the save from UCF as their Libra chases one off the court. And later, FSU not able to return the favor. So this is some effort points early from UCF that are really impressive. UCF with a three-point lead on a 3-0 run to take that lead. FSU will have to scramble. Wow. Are you kidding me? Out to Fisher. FSU will not let the ball hit the floor. Again, using the line, FSU to get UCF out of system. Great block cover, Moravec, the middle. From the back row, Melville's denied. Fisher off the net again. Wow. FSU still digs it up. Moravec tried to catch him napping, but couldn't. They try Nunji on the right side. Yeah. She can't find the floor. And a block on the right, led by Sable. Horvick closing late. I tell you, we said that FSU got here by way of defense. UCF matching them. Swing for swing, dig for dig, as they are leaving it all on the court right now. And realize this is a UCF team that has gotten better and better over the course of the year. We said they were able to avenge their only two conference losses to Cincinnati. It's a team who could be playing their best volleyball this season right now, just as you would hope. And there's a blast from Taryn Knuth from that right hand center. As we said at the top, fourth in the NCAA in blocks per set, but she also hits over 360 on the year with almost two kills, almost two kills per set. Service error there for Morgan Chacon. 
And what a story Chacon is. You're going to get a look at her right there, three in Garnet. She's a redshirt freshman, sat out last season for FSU because in her state championship high school game in 2017, she came down on someone and broke her right leg. It took a surgery to insert a metal rod, and, of course, she had to go through rehab all last year. And, you know, they say still working to some extent to get to her pre-injury self. Again, another long rally. It'll be the, I guess, the modus operandi of the day. That time, I think Peyton Caffrey had enough. Y'all ACC first teamer. And Caffrey is second in the ACC in kills per set behind the Lund of Pitt, who, of course, has been a powerhouse all season long, going undefended, undefeated excuse me, in the ACC this year. And Caffrey with 3.98 kills per set is pretty dangerous herself. Shea Harper got a nice look in the middle on that quick middle set, but just missed it wide. Chris Poole had a good look at that one. He didn't even budge. Yeah. He is one of the stoic figures on that bench. You couldn't tell if he was up 10 or, or down 10. That's so true. No highs or lows emotionally for him, and his team feeds off that. Business. Caffrey on the outside, and look at this. Fisher, free ball for FSU. Where will they go? Let me guess, Caffrey. Big FSU block. Caffrey's there along with the middle. Emma Clothier. And I think both of these teams, Tom, as you've said several times, free ball. And then there hasn't been an attack to follow that that ends the rally. One of these teams is going to have to start to win the transition battle and take advantage of those free opportunities in transition to put some kills to the floor. FSU's second service error of this opening set. So a two-point lead for the Knights out of Orlando and UCF. And checking back in is Aaron Olson, the senior who transferred to UCF from after playing at Bradley. She missed the NCAA tournament last year and a chance to play in front of the home crowd in first and second round action. And UCF was upset in the first round by Florida Gulf Coast. Out to Fisher, and she misses wide. This is kind of what we expected, though. Yeah. With two teams that are fantastic defensively, as we said earlier, both teams block three balls per set. And that last set to Fisher there, well off the net, which makes it difficult for her to find the floor, but gives her room to swing around that big Florida State block. And before their match against Cincinnati, uh, UCF coach said one of the big things for them was to find their way around Cincinnati's block. If they could do that, they could be successful. And I think that's going to be a lot of the same story here today against FSU as you see the response there from Peyton Caffrey after her stop at the net, number 15 there in Garnet. Yeah, you one stole of my FSU's thunder. FSU's big, big leaders in terms of her play and one of their big emotional leaders as well. She was looking for someone to celebrate with. The arms extended out saying, come on, where's the love? Yeah. And he, she gets a look here. And she hit the ball in the net tape. That's four hits. So UCF regains the lead by the slimmest margin as Fisher will serve. Fisher at 25 aces on the regular year through the AAC tournament. Caffrey at the left hand 10. That's tough. That's a quick set out there. And FSU runs a quick paced offense with the setter, Lily Tessier. Caffrey really making an impact in that trip across the front row. I like the fire that she brought to the floor for FSU. We had seen some of those really long rallies where nobody was putting the ball away. Caffrey had enough of that. She went to the front row and brought some fire with her. Let's see if Melville can return the favor. She took a swing there for UCF. Their biggest offensive weapon back out to Melville. Nice dig again for Robertson back left. Roberts is doing a really good job playing defense around that FSU block. And because that FSU block is so good, as we said, coming into the match, that block is second best in the entire nation, that these UCF hitters are having to really think about the opponent across the net trying to swing around that big block. And FSU able to capitalize that on that, and their Libro just stepping in and making big dig after big dig. Nice dig. Back middle for Fisher of UCF to keep this rally alive. Tessier goes to the right side. And a miss from Jasmine Martin from the right. Jasmine Martin, the transfer to Florida State, played at Minnesota before coming to Tallahassee. 
She was an all ACC second team member. And she's from Brooklyn, Minnesota. McKenna Melville also hails from the state of Minnesota. And of course, this bracket feeds into Minnesota. That's a shot that sails wide for Morgan Chacon. And for UCF, they've been a beneficiary on the last six points on FSU errors. It's part of the game. There's a nice look from the right antenna. And once again, wearing 19 today, instead of her customary 16, is Emma Clothier. Really nice rip from Clothier. I tell you, she's impressive. Only a freshman. She was a freshman all ACC selection, and you're getting a look at why. She has grown up over the course of this year. Of course, we were able to see her play early this year, Tom, when she played Florida prior to conference play. And just in that short span of time, you can see the improvement in her game. Melville with the blast from the left antenna. And for McKenna Melville, her third kill. She's worked hard to get those 13 swings already in this opening frame as we head to our first break this afternoon. In-state rivals, UCF with a three-point lead. State rivals in this Division I NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship opening round match. UCF with a three-point lead, and some of that has been due to number 20, McKenna Melville. Yeah, McKenna Melville coming out strong early as we expected. She has those three kills, but I will say it's taken her 13 swings to get those. However, she's managed to stay clean. No errors. Even though FSU continues to dig her, she's staying patient. Right now for FSU, the story, unfortunately, is errors, as they have six attack errors, two service errors, one block error. That's nine points that they've handed across the net to UCF, and you see the difference there. And McKenna Melville listed at 6'1". She looks taller when you look at her on the court, and the wingspan, and you said it right, Missy, what great court vision, patience, no errors yet, a clean slate. In those 13 swings, tried to swipe it off hands, tried to hit when she can with power, and there she is on the block with Moravec. And now you see why the unanimous first team selection. When you get a look at her entire game, we've seen her pick up tip shots, the defense in the backcourt. Of course, we know about her offense, but how about the block there to score a point? She can really do it all. Five run UCF run to get this four point lead. FSU has to send across a free ball. Out to Melville, down the line, she'll kill it. As Tessier coming in back right, the center couldn't play the ball above her head. And those UCF outsides continue to take big swings from off the net where they have plenty of room to avoid that block of Karen Canute, or excuse me, of Taryn Canute right there, 13 in Garnet, who you saw across the net from Melville. These two teams have met on 30 previous occasions. FSU has dominated the series, Missy, 26 and four. They've won the last 17 meetings. This is almost like big sister and little sister with UCF and FSU playing here today in state rivals. It's the first time they've met in the NCAA tournament. And when you take a look at, let's say the UCF side, Missy, what is the mindset coming in knowing you haven't beaten your in-state rival FSU in quite a long time? Yeah, I think, you know, it's as we mentioned coming into this match, it's a clean slate. And as so many coaches have said, you know, everyone comes into this NCAA tournament having either played some really good volleyball to land themselves a spot in the tournament or off of a huge tournament win. And that's the case for UCF. They were able to upset that number one seed Cincinnati, avenge their only two conference losses, and they have no reason not to be playing with confidence here today. And I think that's what they're doing. They have confidence and they're playing really loose. A lot about of this NCAA tournament is about matchups. Analyze this matchup today, we see it. The defense, these are two teams that rely heavily on defense to score points, to induce momentum, to get their games going. Yeah, I tell you, blocking is huge, and it, it allows you to play defense behind it. And that's why, you know, we're seeing so many swings to just get three kills. For Melville to have 13 swings before she could register three kills. So then the question becomes, which players can stay patient? because the blocking can create errors. And when blocking creates errors, it turns one point into two. And I think right now UCF doing a better job of staying patient and clean. And the one thing you did not see on that screen when we showed the stats is what we call block touches. As you said, touching balls on the block to allow the back row defense to make plays. And both teams have touched a lot of balls at the net to keep rallies alive and let their back row defenders have a chance against the likes of Caffrey and Melville. 14 and white there. Yes. Allie Sable. With and the kill, excuse me. Yeah, and that's the other thing about UCF. They're doing a great job of staying diverse, of keeping everyone involved. They run a 6-2 just like FSU, so you're always going to have three attackers across the front row. Can you get the most out of them is the question. 
Free ball opportunity for UCF. And not being fooled was Taryn Knuth in the middle, one-on-one, -on -one, blocking her counterpart across the net, Narissa Morbeck. Even in a free ball situation where you think that the offensive team should have the advantage, Taryn Knuth is able to erase mistakes with the blocking that she does at the net. She is fourth in the entire nation in blocks per set. One and a half, more than one and a half a set. Melville on the outside. We'll get the block as Knuth got the ball hung up in her. And if you can't get around her, you got to fire one through her. And it takes a big swing from Melville and make that kill number five. And guess who's serving now for UCF? McKenna Melville, just a sophomore out of Egan, Minnesota. Out to Chacon for FSU. Missed timing there for FSU on that last swing, and FSU yes, makes it count. There was miscommunication on that swing by Chacon out on the left pin. She approached for a much faster attack. The set not there creates an easy ball for UCF, and Fisher is able to turn that into a point. Florida State Seminoles, Chris Poole, forced to call a timeout here. Florida State Seminoles trying to avoid the fate they've suffered the last two years in the NCAA tournament which would be a first round defeat. And they are down by seven. Tom Collette, Missy Woodermore with you from Gainesville. Coming out of this FSU called timeout with in-state rival UCF out of the ACC. Tournament champions of the ACC to get the automatic bid with a seven point lead. Chacon on the outside. There was a touch at the net, I saw it as well. Off of the UCF block, but I think Sable is saying to her head coach, Ali Sable, 14 in white, saying, I didn't touch it. Let's see if Todd Dajane will issue a challenge. He won't. But we, of course, can take another look if we want to. And I, I think it touched her pinky, and that's why he didn't issue the challenge. He looked to her, and she said, don't use it, coach. Out to Fisher. As she will go to the outside to Caffrey, who's back in the front row. Covers her own block. And it's Canute who sets her the ball there. Good hands. Another cover. Back row Melville, tip shot. On the way down, Caffrey got it. Now she has to reload. And she'll kill it. That was quite a sequence. Chops went right Caffrey. off the block. I mean, that's the swing that may not be the most impressive. He doesn't drill one into the floor, but it is so undefendable, that high ball off the block that no one can run down. Third kill of the opening frame for Caffrey. Outside to Fisher goes UCF. Again, there's Roberts. Oh, oh, wow. I wish I had more of a voice. I'd give you more excitement. That was a big rip from Caffrey. Caffrey certainly <laughs> heating up here for FSU, and they need to get the most out of her trip across the front row. Her offense is their point production right now. With no middle there, Ali Sable had no chance on that cross court right. shot. Fisher swings off hands. There's another block touch for FSU. That's right. Caffrey loads up again, and Caffrey kills it again. Making five now in the opening frame for Peyton Caffrey, who's starting to heat up for the Florida State Seminoles, and they're back within three. Caffrey putting this team on her back right now. There is only one player on this FSU team who has an NCAA win. The Florida State Seminoles, before we headed to break, were on a 4 nothing run, and much of that on the shoulders of number 15 in garnet and gold you see there on your screen. That is Peyton Caffrey, the senior from Winter Springs High School. And although she's a senior, she is one of the players on this team, one of all but one player on this team who does not have an NCAA tournament victory. She played her first year at West Virginia. So she also does not have an NCAA, first two years, excuse me. So she also does not have an NCAA tournament win. It is their lone senior in Madison Sullivan, who was on the team three seasons ago, who has an NCAA tournament win. The other players on this team have yet to have success in the tournament. So they're looking to get that monkey off their back. We're in the big dance and that ball danced on the net. Yes. Luckily for Christina Fisher. And Todd Dajne, probably a sigh of relief. That ball crept over the net and earned the point and ended the FSU run. There's always wetness on the floor, yeah. especially when there's more perspiration in the one and done, one or be done yeah. in the NCAA tournament. Win or be done, I should say. Ooh, a little different look for FSU. 
as Nunji took the shot. Out to Caffrey, look out below. Wow. No defense from UCF. Out to Caffrey again. Not to be denied that time. Six kills in the opening set now for Peyton Caffrey. And the speed of this FSU offense is allowing them to have success against the UCF block because they can't quite catch up. You see there, Nine Harper has to stay with Canute in the middle. She can't release too early on Caffrey, and that gives Caffrey just enough room in that block to sneak one through. The last four FSU points, all Caffrey kills. Right side attack, Allie Sable counted. That's a beautiful swing by Sable, who's not just going down the line there, but you can see her wiping it off those blockers' hands and out of bounds. Very well done. She'll be out of the lineup now as UCF runs a two-setter offense. Aaron Olsen in to serve and take that spot in rotation. Caffrey on the outside. This time is blocked. Moravec up alongside of Anne Marie Watson. And when FSU is in system, they're able to run a very quick offense to the outside of Peyton Caffrey, which allows her to be successful. This time not in system, a high ball. Caffrey's early. She's waiting on it. And guess what? So is the block. Right side goes FSU. But Aaron Olsen plays it up for the Knights. Fisher roll shot. You can probably hear our crowd might pick up that big thud on the block as Melville will play it back into the middle to Olsen. Melville covering the court so well and seeing and reading the game. Melville got the save there with the left arm. She'll send it across with a roll shot. I thought she'd just play across a free ball. Out to Fisher. Yeah, net FSU violation on FSU. I saw that. Trying to find that timing against the UCF swing that is consistently so far off the net and really hard to time if you're a blocker. But the patience of UCF paying off time and time again. See the mind working there behind the facial expression of Chris Poole. Set point, UCF. Out to Caffrey. Why not? That's where you have to go. So they withstand one set point opportunity. If Caffrey can stay in the front row long enough, <laughs> Florida State's got a chance. Yeah. They're going to have to block some balls, too, because you know that UCF will be able to run some side out offensive plays here as Lily Tessier will serve for the Seminoles. That was a heady play by Martin just to send it across. Where will Tessier go to the outside to Caffrey? And it misses, is there a touch at the net? No, the attack error for Peyton Caffrey ends the first set as UCF out of the ACC takes the first set from FSU from the ACC and leads in this. Opening round action in the NCAA Division I Volleyball Championship. In-state rivals, Florida State and UCF. UCF takes the first set in this match of in-state rivals, 25 to 19. Florida State and UCF each with 14 kills in an opening frame. Missy, what doesn't show on the screen there is FSU errors. That's exactly right. right. But it does show up in the hitting efficiency. Yes. You see the 085, that's where those errors come into play versus UCF hitting 164. Both of those pretty low numbers, which I think are a reflection of the great blocking we've seen in this one. You see it reflected there in the stuff blocks, three to four, but in the block touches. So they're really forcing these offenses to have to work. Interestingly, in this little subregion, Tom, there's only one team here who is an automatic qualifier, and that is UCF out of the AAC winning their conference tournament. Of course, FSU is um, out of the ACC. Right. And at Pitt, large bid. An at-large bid as Pitt is the conference winner out of the ACC. Florida co-champions with Kentucky and the SEC, but Kentucky getting the automatic bid because of those head-to-head -head between Kentucky and Florida. And then, of course, we have Alabama State here, who would also be. Won their conference championship. That's exactly right. We'd be the other automatic qualifier here. So the higher-seeded teams in the two matches are not the automatic qualifiers in this in this particular sub-region. Pretty interesting. Interesting first set. UCF had a lead of 15-12 at the media timeout. A lot of that was on nine FSU airs. Yeah. But then UCF went on a 5-1 run to take a commanding 
20 to 13 lead. Then all of a sudden, Peyton Caffrey brought FSU back to within three with her run to 2017. But UCF ends the first set with a 4-1 run. And the Stars offensively are already out. Caffrey, seven kills in the opening set for FSU. They'll need more of that. And for UCF, Melville and Fisher each with five. Yeah, and for FSU, you know, Clothier with three, Morgan Chacon with two, but those came early in the set, late in the set. The only offense FSU was able to produce was out of Peyton Caffrey, and they're going to need a little more diversity if they hope to hang in there. UCF, of course, you mentioned their star, and that being McKenna Melville, but guess what? Fisher has five as well, so they're doing a little better job spreading it around. Speaking of spreading it around, how about an attack on the right side for Anne Marie Watson? She gets the kill. For Anne Marie Watson now on the afternoon. Wearing number 32 in white. That's her second kill. She's only taken seven swings on the right to this point. Let's see what resiliency FSU has here. Trailing a set. Don't want to go down 0 2 in the opening round here as a nice look at the right antenna for Taryn Knuth. FSU on the air, Missy, after losing the first set, just three and eight. Let's see how they bounce back here. As Taylor Roberts will serve it, wearing the contrasting libero jersey. Melville is blocked in the middle. That's number 19, Emma Clothier. And that's exactly what FSU needs to do to get things going. You know, they're so good defensively. If they can score points on their block, that will evolve into offense. They can just get going defensively. I think they'll turn that into a little offense and sort of jumpstart the engine. Melville with a big yes after she hit it. High off hands. What a good look for the sophomore. Hard to score points with your blocking when you've got the likes of McKenna Melville across the net, who is so crafty. Great job there of going high off those blockers' hands. Here's the younger of the two Olsen sisters, Amber Olsen, who will serve. Both teams run a two-setter offense, Missy, as Melville is blocked. I thought for a minute it might come back at him. Clothier had to look back to make sure after being part of the block. She was a member of the all-ACC freshman team in the middle, we, number 19 in Garnet. We talked so much about Knut and her blocking, but I tell you, Emma Clothier, 48th in the nation in blocks per set at 1.25, and that's the ninth best freshman in the country. Pretty good numbers. Great numbers indeed. Clothier has four blocks already on the day. And a kill for Melville. Angle shot is good. We're tied at three. And right now, that's what sets Melville apart, is her ability to work around the block and still find kills. Early in the first set, FSU trying to work around the block of UCF, it created errors. We saw balls hit out of bounds, but Melville there goes around the block, still able to find the corner. Melville came into action today with a team high 29 service aces on the season. As Chris Poole, a discussion with our down official Darren Clark. That discussion has been concluded, so we're ready to return to action. The crafty veteran Chris Poole looking for every advantage. Right side. I thought for a moment someone might get there, but no, Emma Clothier with another kill. And notice FSU making a real effort early in the second set to get their middles going. They've got to find offense from another area of the floor, and so far so good in the second one. Caffrey will serve it now for the Seminoles. Olsen goes out to Fisher. And that's really all she had. The set was dying low outside. She had to try something different. Yeah, awkward out of the hands of Amber Olsen. It just died. It was low. Really no swing there for Fisher. FSU trying to get a little distance here in the second set. Down a frame. Back row attack blast is long. But I like I like the shot selection, if you will, the yeah. set selection. Yeah. The pass was off the net, really took the middle and the right side out of the offense there because of the location of the pass that go with Melville. Service error for Caffrey. Make it three on the day for Florida State as a team. UCF, still a goose egg. They've served it effectively, but have not served an error yet. Speaking of serves for UCF, here is Mackenzie Kuchmaner. 
Transferred to UCF from NC State. Starting libero for UCF. Right side, Sable, just long. But there's a touch call off the Florida State block. Yeah, Florida State block definitely gets a piece of that one. As that one was right in front of us. I think you're going to be able to Lothier see. Lothier or? I think it was Chacon, Chacon that time that got a little piece of that one. Interesting block setup as Chacon was off of the sideline, mm -hmm. anticipating more of the angle shot. Well, I said it, and now they have a service here. <laughs> Isn't that the way First it of is? the day for UCF. Our statistician, Dan Ferran, smiling next door. What a great uh, statistician to have courtside. He sat in that chair all year. We need to put his name on that chair. Oh. Another service there. Make it four for FSU. FSU gives it right back. And I think that's something they can't afford to do right now. Down a set. UCF feeling good. Still within reach here in the second one. You know, not out of reach by any means. Do you feel kind of a lull? It, it seems like we're just in anticipation mode for something to happen. I thought with that one big FSU block, we might have uh, an FSU run of some sort. But now the teams are content to trade service errors. That's one way to score points. Not an effective way. No. UCF, uh, since I mentioned they had none, they've had two quickly. Here comes Adrian L. As we mentioned, both of these teams in two setter situations. We're wearing a massive brace on the left leg is Adrian L. Back row attack, Melville. L will, that's Caffrey who picked it up, I take it, beg your pardon. To the right side, Emory Watson. FSU goes to the right side. Fisher, dug up by L. Back row Caffrey blasts. Can they get it out of their own bench, but they won't. And I tell you, Fisher hit a ball down the line, forcing FSU setter to make first contact. That's an immediate out of system opportunity for UCF, but they're not able to capitalize because of the huge swing of Peyton Caffrey out of the back row. So she digs them out of that hole. Eight kills for Caffrey's. You got a close up look at L's leg brace. Legal contact, double hit. And that's Canute all over the swing of Harper there. I mean, she is with her step for step. She's there before the ball is set there. She knows exactly what, where she's supposed to be, and that's why she's such a good blocker. She's not just physically good blocking. She is mentally good. Back row Melville. Tough play for L. Caffrey back row. Maybe a little bit too much mustard on that back row attack. What they call the pipe, Missy. Yeah, I think that ball was set tighter than the net than she expected. She got it on her way down. She just didn't have much of a chance on that one. So here's Fisher, Christina Fisher. 25 service aces coming into action today for UCF. From the left, Chacon. Just long. Morgan Chacon, we mentioned about how her senior season in high school ended and how she's made her way back onto the court. She also plays on the FSU beach volleyball team. Yeah. And she's actually paired with Peyton Caffrey when she does so. Yeah, they're pretty good together. Yeah, that's a team, FSU beach team, that finished ranked fourth in the nation last season. Outside to Melville. Maybe a little bit too much to ask a middle blocker to play a ball at her knees up. That was right at you from Chacon. Yeah, coming at you quickly too, as soon as you make the turn off the net, you're not really looking for it down low. So UCF has pulled back to within one. Where will FSU go to Chacon? Tried to swipe it off hands. Nice play to keep it alive there from Sullivan. Right side, Amory Watson. I think most of the FSU defenders thought it was going to the left. Yeah, and you would think that with Melville standing out at the left antenna, but Watson has become more and more of an offensive threat this year with that long arm, just whip-like action. Really UCF. nice swing. UCF on a 4 nothing scoring run with the exclamation from Anne-Marie Watson. And set two, UCF up one set to none. And UCF was trailing but went on a 4-0 run, forcing this Florida State timeout. We're back in Gainesville. Missy Whittemore, Tom Collette with you again. I apologize. It's that time of year. The voice is, uh, sounds like I have a frog in my throat. <laughs> if I drop it down an octave, I could be James Earl Jones or... Barry White, the late Barry White. 
Tom, out of that timeout, as we see there, the swing from Canute will put FSU back on top for by one. But out of that timeout, you still take a look at the numbers. And one of the numbers that we expected was seven blocks from Florida State. However, UCF still right there in this second set because Florida State hitting below 100 at 085 coming out of that timeout. And UCF hitting 139. Both of those numbers, as we said, pretty low. But which team can hold their opponent even lower is the question right now. Moravec gets her first kill of the afternoon from the middle for UCF. And she will serve now. That's Lachey Harper, I beg your pardon, who is now serving for UCF. And for Harper, that was her second kill. As she will serve it again. Now Moravec back on the court. Belleville will play the ball out of the net and throw it back to a ball shagger as we're 12-12 here in this second set. And UCF, who was perfect in set one in terms of zero service errors, three here in this second set alone. Here's Taylor Roberts for Florida State. Outside to Melville. And a nice up from Roberts to Caffrey. Great block cover from L. Melville will have to readjust with the roll shot played up by L for Florida State. Out to Caffrey again, in from the sideline. Wow. Melville again with a one-handed save. Melville's ability to cover the court is so impressive. Caffrey will get her ninth kill of the afternoon to give the lead back to the Seminoles for the moment. Good job there by Caffrey, finding a way to convert to a point. It took her three swings in that one rally to do so. Second one being an off-speed shot that UCF was able to pick up there by Melville. Got to go around Moravec and hit it off her left elbow there. Great replay look. Thank you, Scott Snyder and our crew. Right side, Anne-Marie Watson. Was there a touch? I thought I saw hands of the net, but no. It's just an attack error, so FSU trying to build on this small lead. Not in a must-win situation. We play best three out of five, but FSU does not want to fall down to UCF 0-2 here in this situation. Overpass Fisher and the kill. She's now in double figures is Peyton Caffrey. Great job there by Caffrey just being patient, waiting for that ball to get to the net so she could take a little rip at it. No chance of a play for the Knights there. What you can do, we can do. Yeah. We went to break, a UCF 4-0 run, now Florida State on a 4-0 run. Melvin off the net. Crafty shot with the roll. A must-have situation there. UCF in desperate need of a side out. No surprise they find Melville on the left pin, and she's able to find a way. Melville with her ninth kill. This is the Melville Caffrey show yeah. to this point, dueling outside hitters. As back in the lineup is Amber Olsen. The younger of the two Olsen sisters, the sophomore. As Caffrey winds up and swings again. 11 kills for Peyton Caffrey. And again, she's able to split the block here as Moravec just can't quite close. You see the speed of that FSU offense, and it's a double quick in front. Clothier also coming from the left side. That's going to hold the middle blocker. FSU is so good at double quicks. They're outside hitting a really fast tempo ball. That middle coming in quick, and it's really difficult to close on the outside when that's the case. Moravec will get credit for that kill. For Moravec, that's her first kill of the afternoon. They need to get some offense from her in the middle. She's been part of their match plan all year long. For Todd Dagenet, free ball opportunity for the Knights. Right side, Sable. Another free ball opportunity for UCF. Can they close it this time? Fisher again. Roberts with the up. Who's going to flinch, Missy? I don't. This is incredible. Fisher saves the block herself, and it goes back to Florida State. Caffrey is blocked by Moravec. 
Wow, and I was going to say, it won't. It certainly won't be Peyton Caffrey who flinches, and she didn't, and she took a huge rip at that ball. It took an even better block from Moravik to get up there and stop that Florida State offense. When you can't score points offensively, Moravik doing a great job of finding a way defensively to shut down this FSU team. Back to Caffrey with the tip shot. Back to Fisher. Oh, that's... Something we haven't seen all afternoon until this point. Nice set across the net by Tessier. Little little shot over by Tessier. Does a really good job there. If over the course of a rally, the defenders can lose track of that setter. Certainly out of the back court when you run a 6-2. Not offensive setters. And so she just finds a really nice time to drop one in. Miss for Moravec. She's been not had that connection, it seems like, to this point on the day. We mentioned this moments ago, they have to get her involved in the offense. She only has one kill on the afternoon. Nice look on the outside of the left pin for Christina Fisher. And Fisher's just done a great job of continuing to challenge that block. She hasn't allowed them to stuff her often. She's gone off hands. She's gone around the block. That time she just battles right through, just continues to challenge that block and hasn't allowed that FSU block to find their rhythm against her. Kuchmaner will serve here for UCF. Caffrey, they targeted her on the pass. Right side, Martin is played up. Back row, Melville. Back row, Caffrey. Amber Olsen with the up. I didn't think she was going to take a shot, but what a great shot by Melville. Wow, the hang time by Harper. Back row, Caffrey. Played up Melville. Tessier goes outside to Chacon. Did she swipe hands? No. And I tell you what, no matter what happens tonight, these teams have every right to be tired. We have seen some long volleyball rallies. This is great tournament play. Hats off to both of these teams. Jacone, that's another FSU player the Seminoles have to get going. 2-4-18, her line at the moment. A negative number hitting efficiency. Fisher will play it out of the UCF bench. Melville does such a great job attacking out of the backcourt in broken systems situations and still able to put some heat on the ball. FSU touches another ball at the net. Back to Fisher, this time a roll. Tessier, back row to Caffrey. Ouch, that put a dent in the floor. Peyton Caffrey now with an even dozen on the day. And that's a different gear from Peyton Caffrey right there as she's coming up out of the back court. And we've seen her hit some balls hard, but that one had some speed on it. Peyton Caffrey on the season, five matches with 20 or more kills. Back row, Melville. Joust at the net, one by UCF. Right side, Sable. Sable will get the kill as a valiant effort made by team captain for Florida State, Madison Sullivan on that left sideline. I really like the bump set decision there by UCF. As you're expecting another ball to the left antenna in that out of system situation, they bump it to the right side. That's a really good look for them. They have two good right side swingers. The balance is going to work in UCF's favor. Sable's fourth kill. She's now out. As here's Aaron Olson taking her place in the rotation and serving and setting. Best look of the afternoon for the Minnesota transfer, Jasmine Martin. Martin is a player who had a career day in that huge upset they had earlier this season, a sweep of number three Minnesota. That's their highest ranked win ever for Florida State. And Martin had 16 kills that day, a former Minnesota player. Not a bad homecoming. Yeah, 16 kills, only two errors. She hit 500 against her old team. Had to feel good. FSU will go back row again to Caffrey. Just a bullet. But UCF will play it across. No, they won't. Melville maybe try to do a little bit too much. And Melville yelling that one of the FSU players was in the net. Todd Dagenet will challenge immediately. They're challenging that FSU was in the net. Melville very, very, very animated right after she, she took this shot. I, I, I Canute think and, and Nunji are there. 
But I didn't see it there from that I look. Think, I think after the ball went into the net, then the net could have possibly, I'm not even sure that it did then, but it could have possibly touched an FSU player. But if so, it's because the ball goes into the net and pushes it into them. Oh, you see the elbow The left here. elbow of Canute, maybe? But I think it's because the ball, the ball goes the net, into though. the net and pushes the net into Canute. Back to this net cam look. Yeah, I don't think so. And to me, there's not anything conclusive there that would say that Florida State was the net, and they agreed with us. After the replay, no net violation. Todd Dajane will extend the conversation with Darren Clark. Yes, he will. Advocating for his point of view, he won't win that argument. No, I don't think so. But he'll be fine just to extend it, make his point. It allows a member of his staff to get some coaching in. And speaking about looking on, Mary Wise and the Florida Gators hosting this first and second round activity in Gainesville. And now we'll have Darren Clark make his way across to talk with the up official, Suzanne Lowry. And I've called volleyball for 25 plus years, and I, I don't, I can't. Venture a guess is what the discussion might be about. Because I thought the replay didn't show us that there was a net violation. Good look at the two officials who keeping this. And now Suzanne Lowry will come down from the stand. I can't remember the last time I saw an up official come down from the stand either, Missy. Wow. Do you remember that during I, a match? I don't know if I've ever seen that. So the question in my mind is, the attack goes into the net. Mm -hmm. Did the net violation by FSU happen prior to that? Mm -hmm. Or did it happen as a result of the ball being pushed into the net? Well, the net has, as we've seen it, shaken quite a bit on some balls that have been hit into it to this point. And you saw from the great looks we had at the replay, we'll take one more look at it. Watch how much the net moves when Melville hits the ball in the net. Quite a bit. But I just don't see anything there. As she's attacking, you kind of have to look at the elbow, I think, of... The right Canute. elbow. Yeah. And they're wow. actually going to look up the rule to see... They still see. print those? Yeah. I thought it would be a PDF online. Wow. <laughs> they are going to the rule book. It is the NCAA Maybe it's what you tournament. Maybe that the ball forced the net yeah. into the FSU player. Yeah. I'll tell you be. what, though, I, it's going to take some time, but I, I credit them for their effort here to be thorough in the NCAA tournament, and she is going to show Coach Dajane. If we could maybe zoom in a little bit, that you see, yeah, the, the rule book that Suzanne Lowry is holding and explaining the rule to Todd Dajane, the interpretation. I wish we had the uh, theme music to uh, one of those legal shows that was on. We could roll here. Or, yeah, Jeopardy would be another one. Or maybe Dan Hartman's instant replay as we keep watching the replays. <laughs> I've never seen a discussion gone on wow. this long for a net violation. Now, the, the players on the bench are thoroughly enjoying the delay. They uh, are. Giving them a chance to have a little dance. Florida State Seminole players are laughing their, yeah, and, and giggling. You see, UCF showing off their dance moves. Yeah. Fans starting to get restless. Well, after the rule book was brought out and shown to Todd Dajane, it's back in the officials' pack. And Taryn Canute is literally saying to her teammates, the ball hit me through the net. I can read her lips. She is clearly saying, the ball hit me through the net. Well, she's had 16 blocking errors on the year. Those are net violations, but that wasn't one. That's exactly right. I agree. And according to the NCAA volleyball rulebook, it wasn't one. Well, after all that, FSU with a three-point lead and the serve. Here's Adrian L. Outside to Fisher. L. Out to Chacon. And Chacon. For Chacon. 
just she her can't. third kill on the afternoon. She just has not been able to find her groove track, offensively, right? but she does so much for this team as a six rotation outside hitter. She's asked to pass so many balls. Her role goes well beyond her offense, but I know she'd like nothing more than to find a little rhythm here. And that's Jessica Nunji, mm -hmm. who has actually played more as the season has gone on. You know, she's not in their box scores early in the season, and then you see over the course of conference play that she's come on and been an option for them. Tough one-handed set. She backs at it. Melville maybe tried to, from way back beyond the net, try to do too much with that. FSU Attack. a little frustrated in that they think that ball that went over that UCF made a pancake play on or attempted to make a pancake play on, they believe that ball was down. Several people motioning from the FSU bench that that ball was down, but it won't matter because FSU wins the point anyway. And you play to the whistle. Outside to Melville. Roll shot played up by Sullivan. Out to Caffrey. Look at Canute there in the middle. Olsen goes outside to Melville. L with the up. Caffrey off the net. Oh. Caffrey off the net is good. And UCF has to make an attempt on that ball because it's off the blocker's hands. But here's a look again floor. at that ball that, I'll tell you, FSU is pretty confident that ball hit the floor. The officials called that up. And I'm not sure that Kuchmanner actually did get to that ball in time. I don't think I so. I think that's on the white Gatorhead logo. That's floor. Yeah, that's floor. Luckily, FSU won that rally, so it doesn't matter. Great look from our crew there. Wow. And the digital zoom in to see it yeah. hit the floor. You saw the ball. You see so many shots when you watch a, a golf tournament that the ball compresses off of the driver when the players are teeing off. But that was a great look. We are in Gainesville this afternoon in the opening match of the Division I Women's Volleyball Tournament alongside Missy Whittemore. I'm Tom Collette. This match has played out the way we thought it would. Two teams superb on defense. Neither one won a rally to end. Yeah, I really like the way that they're fighting right now offensively. Both looking to find their groove, and we're seeing them led UCF by Melville, FSU by Peyton Caffrey, exactly what we expected. You know, this is like you know, two heavyweight boxers going at it in the first round of the tournament, everything you could hope for. Let's see what's going on in Gainesville this weekend. It's first and second round action. You're watching UCF and Florida State there. This is the lower right side of the bracket. Up next after this one, it's Florida taking on Alabama State. And the other side of this pod, if you will, is Minnesota hosting in Minneapolis, St. Paul, Fairfield, Iowa State, and Creighton. Creighton, a dangerous team. And when I said earlier this feeds into Minnesota, of course it runs into Minnesota. However, they feed perhaps into Austin, Texas, if Austin is able to take care of business, win this weekend, they would be the team actually hosting the regional. Service ace for Morgan Chacon. You mentioned it. She can do it in other ways, just beyond what she does at the net. Her play is so important to this team. We've seen her dig for, balls, now the serving. You know, the offense, I'm sure, can be frustrating, but an elite outside player has to be able to play through that. She's doing a great job of that. FSU at set point. Out to Caffrey. You like it? Did she get hands? Yes, she did. Peyton Caffrey with their 14th kill on the afternoon ends the second set by swiping it off the hands. Worth another look. Watson, 32 of UCF, acted like that was not the case. Dajne of UCF chooses not to challenge that, and so it'll be point UCF, excuse me, Florida State, and they take that one 25-20 to tie things up at A okay, Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. Alongside Missy Whittemore, I'm Tom Collette, and this week, the last few years, has been very special for me as well, with my son going through leukemia treatments the last, well, gosh, a little over two years. So what a message from those three individuals in that video as we come back. And because it's personal to you, Tom, it's personal to us as well, and we are thrilled to see how well William is doing. Thank you very much, Missy. Here we have got, as advertised, a fantastic match between two schools that are meeting for the first time, in-state rivals meeting for the first time in the NCAA tournament. This is how it looks through two sets by the numbers, Missy. Even Steven 
Yeah, it, it really is. And it's interesting in how low those hitting efficiencies continue to be over the course of this match. This has been a defensive battle, long rallies playing out, lots of balls dug, and you've had to be patient offensively. And I tell you, it, it's, it's gone back and forth. It's really just as we expected. And for Florida State, leading them this afternoon as she's done all year is Peyton Caffrey. You know, interestingly for Peyton Caffrey, in coming into this match, she had had only one attack error in her last 71 attempts. Today, she's already had six attack errors. But her aggressive style might just be paying off because she also has 14 kills after just two sets. That is seven kills per set so far here today. She's playing with fire in her eyes, and you can see that she knows as a senior, not just her year is on the line, but her career is on the line, and we're seeing a great performance out of her. She's had five matches this year with 20 or more kills, 10 total with the Knowles, 14 in her two years at West Virginia. She is an offensive machine from that left antenna, and she's got the hops because she's only six foot. Yeah. I say only six feet. Right. <laughs> you look at some of the other outside hitters around the country at 6'3", 6'4", Plummer at 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. Wow. And she is just, you don't realize how powerful she is until you really see her take a good rip at the ball. And she and Melville both have been so impressive here today. These are the type of arms that you ride all season long. And there's a good comparison of the hitting efficiencies from set one to set two. FSU, of course, hitting below 100 in set one, not able to win that first set, jumps to 146 and wins set two. The opposite true for UCF. So let's see in this pivotal third set, Missy, who's defensive will? defines this, as I said, pivotal third set. Which team will take the 2-1 lead as we're back in action from Gainesville? Caffrey off the net, of course, we'll see her swing. And it's a well-placed tip just over the outstretched arms of the blockers there, Watson and Harper. Make it 15. It works, the tip shot. I think for FSU, one thing they need to get more out of, as we've talked about it, is some offense from Chacon. We had the ace near the end of that last set. Quick middle set is good for Harper. But Chacon, you said she does so much for that team, for FSU. Nine double-doubles on this season. She's had four matches that were 15 kills, 15 digs. And this start is reminiscent to the start of set two for FSU, who dropped set one. They came out, if you remember, in set two and were very intent on getting their middles going. Well, we see UCF respond in much the same way. They drop set two, they come out in set three, a ball right away to Harper, and then you see the response there from the Seminoles as they find their youngster in the middle, Clovier. 2-1 Florida State just getting underway here in set three from Gainesville. As Tessier serves for the Seminoles. Seminoles wearing the garnet tops. UCF in the white. Caffrey again, blast one. Make it 16. Caffrey doesn't just place that one in the corner. That ball has some pace on it. She buries it in the corner. And a big smile from one of two seniors on this Florida State squad, Peyton Caffrey. Again, another long rally. Melville off the net for UCF. On the offensive side, we haven't called her name as much lately. McKenna Melville. After losing set two, I would expect to see balls to Melville here in this third set. You know, when, when your back is against the wall, your tendencies rise up, and I think balls to Melville will be pretty common here. Melville on the outside there, off hands, played up by Roberts. Back row, Chacon but she'll miss it long. Nice and job by Fisher, who's you know patrolling the back court there along the back line. And she has to be really aware of her placement on the court. Smart decision to let that ball go. That's just as easy of a point as it is to force your teammates to have to kill one. Let that ball go and you get a point just as well. Harper serves. Moravec back on the court for UCF. Again, DeCaffrey played up by Aaron Olson. Nice shot off the net by Anne Marie Watson. FSU will go back to Caffrey. Back row Fisher. Right side Martin. Jasmine Martin with the kill. Jasmine Martin with the kill. Point Seminoles. Second kill in the day for Jasmine Martin. 
And a little more antenna to antenna here for FSU. And certainly with Chacon in the front row and Peyton Caffrey in the black back row, that's exactly what they need. That will help Chacon. If they can create some offense around her, it'll give her some holes in the block. A rare missed pass opportunity for Christina Fisher. You look at their serve receive line, Missy. It's their two outsides in libero. Yeah. Six rotation, both outside hitters for UCF. Florida State again with the touch at the net. Martin right side. But there's Melville. She just reloaded and came back to take a swing. Oh! Roberts wasn't fooled by the setter sending the ball across the net for FSU. Chacon had to play the roll shot off the net. Now right side, Anne-Marie Watson hit that ball in the net. I'm getting a kick out of these long rallies now too because the UCF band off to our right is now counting every contact yes. in these long rallies. They got up to nine there, I think. Wow. UCF will take a timeout here as Florida State has opened up a massive opening set for UCF. Florida State has had Big Mo on its side and forcing UCF to take a timeout here early in the third set. The Knights trailing now the Seminoles by five as out of the UCF timeout, Peyton Caffrey to serve for Florida State. And it might be Caffrey who created that momentum for FSU, Tom, with her big swings, getting her team right back into this match. Interesting that UCF went to the right side at opening play and serve receive. Out to Melville, they go in transition though, but a dig for Roberts. Roberts will play it across for FSU. Free ball, Knights. And Marie Watson. And I tell you, a few balls to the right side is probably just what the doctor ordered here for UCF because it's gonna force FSU's middle blocker to hold longer. If they're able to release too early on Melville, if it's such a heavy dose of Melville, that's a really tall order for her to constantly be swinging into two big blocks. So if they can spread it a little, it'll actually be an advantage. And Marie Watson out and in to serve there was Amber Olson. Make it now four service errors on UCF in the match. And both teams play a two-setter offense primarily. So that means for UCF in white, number 14, Sable, the lefty back on the court to play on the right side. For Florida State now to serve, here's Madison Sullivan, the team captain. She'll play the ball up here with Sullivan. Back row attack, Caffrey, played up by Fisher. Sable has to readjust and hits the ball in the net. And that's an awkward set that time by Amber Olsen there. She's not able to get to the net quickly enough, doesn't have her feet set. Serving again for Florida State is Madison Sullivan. Again, the only current Seminole, if she gets the ace, the only current Seminole to play and win a match in the NCAA tournament. And another timeout quickly called for by UCF here. After the Florida State ace, it's a seven point lead for the Seminoles here in Gainesville. UCF and FSU in this opening round match in the 2019 Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. And FSU riding that wave of momentum have scored 14 of the match's last 17 points. Sable tried to end that for UCF, but played up by Florida State. Great save by Olsen there, the setter for UCF, but a free ball opportunity for the Knowles. Canute blocked by Moravec. Back row Caffrey. Played up Fisher, UCF. Moravec again, nice battle in the middle. And the right side kill for Jasmine Martin. And Jasmine Martin slowly but surely starting to play herself into this match. I believe that's three kills now in this match. So a slow start for her, but she could certainly come on strong and provide a boost for this FSU offense. Played it nicely off Melville's hands there. Great replay by our crew. Tough free ball to play, but McCaffrey did. Chacon, roll shot. Maybe that'll be the shot to get Morgan Chacon on track. And what a smart play by the youngster. Realize this is a redshirt freshman who was not able to play a year ago rehabbing from that 
broken leg she sustained in the state championship game to finish her high school career. So this is a player who's still collegiately very young, and she has really played with such a level head here this evening. FSU on a 5 nothing run, and go back a little further, 8-1 run to take this big lead. Melville ends the FSU scoring drought, the scoring run, and their drought. She'll serve now after garnering her 10th kill. Big mountain to climb for UCF. Got to get some points while serving. She'll play up to Conewell Melville. Fisher powers one through Canute and Martin. That's a tall task to ask, but she did it. And this is a big swing here from Fisher, who does not shy away from that block at all. But the last one right through the hands. It comes off of a Melville dig, though. You know, she worked hard across the front row, finally ended it with a kill that sent her back to serve. A couple nice serves from her, but defense to go along with it. Long for Sable. Back to Fisher for a moment. That was just her second kill since the opening set. It's important for UCF to get her engaged in the Knights offense. And it's not, it's not for lack of trying. Because no. at this point in the match, Florida State has taken 133 swings and UCF has taken 125. Wow. And we're only in set three. Back row attack, Caffrey. Melville played it up. FSU trying to run the offense. Back row attack again for Caffrey. Played up by Amber Olson. Sable off Canute. I didn't know what Sable was going to do with wow. that ball, but off the net from the right side, she yeah. took a pretty good swing, Missy. That was scary. I, I don't know if I would have had the nerve to take a swing at that ball hanging in the air that long so far off the net. And Canute right where she needed to be. I think that ball actually goes off of her face. She's up so high above the net there. Kill for Ali Sable, her fifth on the day. She was air free in that championship match against Cincinnati. Last time out, these... Knights put, hit the court. Fisher on the outside, caught some hands. The libero knew it, Roberts couldn't play it up. Fisher starting to get going again. Yeah, that's a great swing by Fisher, because as you said, Tom, it obviously caught hands if you're here in the gym, and so that defense ref issue has to attempt to make a play on it. She's hopeful that they can win two matches here in Gainesville. She'd be heading home to Austin, Texas, if they could do that. First team, all AAC selection, Christina Fisher. Was there a touch? Nope. Canute just long with a nice looking set. Yeah. The play looked well from the right antenna, but the Knights now on a 5-1 run, forcing FSU head coach Chris Poole to burn a Seminole timeout. And what has triggered this run, Missy? We'll get back to that in just a minute. We're going to step away with UCF trying to close the gap. Back in Gainesville, coming out of Florida State called timeout as UCF down big in set three on a 5-1 run. Tom Collette, Missy Whittemore with you. Again, I apologize for the voice today. But Missy, what has triggered this UCF run? Well, you know, I, I think they, they've spread it around a little. You know, we talked about errors from Florida State early, and then we saw some errors for UCF here in this one. So they've been able to play a little cleaner here late in this third set. And even if they don't close this gap, as a coach, you have to feel good about the fact that they've at least gotten back on track because you don't want to go into set four with the momentum totally favoring FSU. And they've been able to regain a little momentum or create a little more equal playing field on this neutral court. Canute from the right antenna. Why is that slide play so effective in the women's game? Oh, it's so difficult to defend. If it's set well and if the attacker is chasing it, it is just you don't know where they're going to cut that ball off. It's, if it's set well, you can hit it at any angle. It is really hard to set a block on a, on a well-set slide. Chacon with that service error for FSU, their fifth service error on the day. Another opportunity, a crack in the door for UCF to come back. UCF runs that two-setter offense. Back on the court is Aaron Olson as well as on the right side, Anne-Marie Watson, opposite her in the rotation. Somehow got to that ball and got it to Harper. I'm waiting for the UCF band to start counting again. They're counting. From the right side, Anne-Marie Watson terminates. First team, all AAC. 
And Anne Marie Watson, a junior now, has averaged 2.62 kills per set this season. So she has given them a nice dose of, uh, of offense at the opposite antenna. Great look at it. She got it through that block before it closed so quickly. And the service ace, just what the doctor ordered for Todd Dejeuner and the UCF Knights. The service ace from Aaron Olson, her 14th on the year, forcing the timeout. UCF in with three now as Florida State calls a timeout to try to come up with answers. Chris Poole takes it. We'll be back after this. UCF trying to get back here in this third set, trailing now by only three. UCF Knights, look at the first team all AAC. The two outsides, Melville and Fisher. And Melville not only the tournament MOP, but in a unanimous selection to that all-conference team. And how about Peyton Caffrey, who also was an all-conference selection in the ACC. A huge swing there from the left side for Florida State. And there's a look at Melville. Before that point, UCF had scored eight of the last 10 in this match to pull within three here in the third. As Taylor Roberts, that unique approach, serves it for Florida State. Back row attack, Melville. Great up there by Harper. He calls a timeout to try to come up with answers. Chris Poole takes it. We'll be back after this. Now by only three. UCF Knights. Look at the first team all AAC. The two outsides, Melville and Fisher. And Melville not only the tournament MOP, but in a unanimous selection to that all-conference team. And how about Peyton Caffrey, who also was an all-conference selection in the ACC. A huge swing there from the left side for Florida State. And there's a look at Melville. Before that point, UCF had scored eight of the last ten in this match to pull within three here in the third. As Taylor Roberts, that unique approach, serves it for Florida State. Back row attack, Melville. Great up there by Harper. FSU goes middle, but the set was kind of low. Right side, Watson. That was an awkward shot for Chacon, moving to her left, coming towards that there 10 was, foot line. There was a beautiful set in that rally by their senior setter, Aaron Olson, number two in white for UCF, who was able to slide in there the last second to hang a ball to the right antenna for UCF. Just mix it up just a little bit. Since she's come into this match here, she's just brought a different level of experience and leadership to the court as a senior. She's really impressed me. And we have a challenge, I believe, by Chris Poole. See if we can get word from our staff over on the other side of the, the net there. Net violation. Just heard the public address announcer make the call there. And I don't remember watching it live where the net violation might have occurred. Sent across there by Clothier. That was that set that I thought was so yeah. pretty there by their senior, Watson. Aaron Olsen. And then the air, so I think it has to be in early there the early in the rally, that, that rally. very first block attempt we saw from Watson on the right side mm -hmm. early in that rally, to me, would be the only questionable play. I didn't really see much there. As you said, it had to be that early, very early in the rally. And of course, you can challenge early in the rally. It doesn't have to be the final play of the rally. Ball stands, point nine. Yeah, I don't see anything there either. Because we'd be looking Paul for UCF stand. into UCF the net. Point. It was a Florida State challenge. Yes. So at some point, and I think it was the first replay that our crew gave us. That was a good look at that block there by Watson alongside Harper, and I don't think they were in the net. Nice up, Harper, after being part of the block. Whoa, a back set from the middle. Wow, good save Emma by... Emma Clothier with a back set, the middle blocker, Missy. Good save by L here over defensively, though, for FSU because the push off the block 
by Melville, I thought was going to be a kill. And look at this save by L to keep that ball alive. And Florida State capitalizes on her defensive effort. Two great plays in that sequence by Florida State. Here's the serve for Tessier. Harper in the middle is played up by Tessier. Caffrey on the outside, down the line. Dug up by Aaron Olson. Melville tries to hit the angle shot off the net, just misses it wide. Really sharp cut there from Melville, and it goes just wide. But again, that's the response of an outside hitter after they've dealt with that tough Florida State block all night. They start looking for other angles, trying to create kills. And Watson knew she had a swing that maybe she shouldn't have uh, accomplished or tried to accomplish there. Right after she hit it, she grabbed the bottom of the net in frustration. Yeah, the ball was dying inside. And as a right-handed player on the right side, she never really got her feet in good position to take a rip at that. That's called in by the line judge off to our right. Florida State 19, UCF 17. Just one off their biggest lead here in this set. Let's take a look at this. I think look at the ball, just no rotation on it. In. Yeah, yeah, it's in. In the wood grain. Back row Chacon. Superb play in front left by Caffrey to keep that ball in play for FSU. To the right side, Dan Marie Watson. Nice up by Tessier. Wow, and the celebration was worth it. And Marie Watson after killing it. It's another, teammates. another beautiful set here from Aaron Olsen to hang it right at the right pin and allow her to come in. It's a great <laughs> approach by Watson there. She does a good job of getting herself well off the net in position to make a big rip at that ball. And Marie Watson, one of those three first team all AAC. And pass will check in to serve here for UCF. Drizzy pass. Tough to come in off the bench this late in the match. And come in to pass, but that one's out. And Caffrey, that means Jacones in the front row. Caffrey serving for Florida State. Calling everybody off is the libero, Kuchmaner. And Melville will get the kill as the block and couldn't turn it back into the court, FSU. Here's the big rip again from Melville out at the left pin. She goes right after those hands of Jasmine Martin there. And a new player in for UCF on the front row is Catherine Weselich. So Todd Dagene trying to give Chris Poole and the Florida State Seminole some different looks, some different arm swings. Mm -hmm. Just trying to throw him a curve. It's so true. A chess match. Yeah, you never know what could be the spark. Serve here for Madison Sullivan. Right side, Sable. Melville was just going to swing at it. And Knute was there, but couldn't turn it back into the court. Melville tried to catch FSU off guard, but Knute was right there. And I got to say, I love the aggressive approach that we yeah. see in this match from both Melville and Caffrey. They are not afraid to go up and go after it. Most players step off the net, net and pass that ball to their setter, but not those two. Right side, Martin. Up, Amber Olsen. Melville steps in and just gives FSU a free ball. Played by Tessier. Right side, Martin. Just pushed it across. Great up, Roberts. Free ball opportunity for UCF. Right side, Sable. Down the line for the kill for Ali Sable. Make it six on the day for Ali Sable. And that's really UCF at its best. Staying in system, extending the rally, and then moving it from antenna to antenna. See who can get you the kill that time, Ali Sable. They have so many weapons. Beautiful serve from Melville. It results in an ace. 
Here come the Knights again. And in a set where Melville has not been as effective offensively, I love her approach at the service line. She has gone back to the service line both times and created havoc with her serve. So when she's not scoring points offensively, she still gets it done for this Knights team. That was her team high, 30th on the year. Fisher was up on the block, but it goes off her. The kill for Martin for FSU. Seminoles can play it antenna to antenna offensively. And that time on the right, it was Martin. She'll check out as Adrian L. will check in. On the other side of the rotation, FSU makes the change with Jessica Nunji. Was that a block or was that the net? That was a big FSU block. I think that's Taryn Canute back in the front row yeah. and making her presence known right away. She's so good with that left hand. That's where a lot of middle blockers can be had is a ball off that left hand, but Taryn Canute holds strong there. Canute's fourth block of the day. As out goes Weselich, and back in is Narissa Moravec. Moravec has to make the pass on the short ball. Great up, Kuchmaner. Melville back row. Canute, boy, she's up at the net aggressive, isn't she? She's for FSU. so good. Sullivan off the forearms. Let's it go wisely as Nunji had a little bit too much on that. Yeah, good, again, good communication across the back court for UCF to let that ball go. Big spot here for UCF's libero, the redshirt senior, transferred in from NC State, Mackenzie Kuchmaner. Can she serve the Knights closer? Next point is a Florida State set point if she can't. Wow, I love how L went down to get that yeah. and played it perfectly to the right antenna. And again, the offense from Canoe, just as impressive as the defense. You know, she doesn't get as many looks offensively. She's so involved defensively that there was a rally moments ago that she touched so many balls, she wasn't able to get off the block and be available offensively, but she is really good offensive as well. Canute six kill. UCF goes to Fisher. Fisher responds as the Knights evade and avoid one set point. 24-19. This change is made. Again, both teams run two setter offenses primarily. Watson back in on the right side for Olsen, the younger of the two Olsen sisters, Amber. Amory, excuse me, Sable out and in to serve. Here's the older of the two sisters, Aaron Olsen, serving and setting. Back row attack, Melville. Back row attack, Chacon. Right side, Anne-Marie Watson. She'll play it up after it was blocked. Fisher with the roll. Caffrey. Melville, second contact. Free ball, FSU. Where will they go? To the outside, to Caffrey. And she's blocked. Anne-Marie Watson. She's been really a emotional high. Yeah, and Watson, set. no stranger to having to shut down a big left, a big player yeah. in their league, you know, when they've had the likes of Jordan Thompson. So Jordan Thompson often swinging from the right side, of course, but when she swings from the left side, they've had to shut down some big left side players. Enough is enough, says Taryn Canute. Third opportunity at set point. FSU closes it out 25-20. And FSU takes their first lead in this match today. After dropping the first, FSU is roared back to win the next two and now hold the advantage over UCF. Championship first round match, the Florida State Seminoles out of the ACC have the lead. And through three sets, Missy, we've seen a pivot. Florida State has found an offensive rhythm. And it hasn't, on the defensive side, hasn't translated to a lot of blocks for them, but they sure have touched a lot of balls at the net as well. They have. I think that's been a huge factor, not just the stuff blocks that we see there, which nine is a pretty good number, but UCF really going step for step with them in terms of that defense at the net, but the touch blocks that have allowed them to transition points is huge, and I still think the hitting efficiency really tells the story in this one, and particularly when you take a look at their stars. We knew they were going to have to work hard for their kills, but Peyton Caffrey with 18 kills here hitting nearly 200 and McKenna Melville for UCF with 12 kills, but she's hitting just under 100. And to me, that's the difference right now. Good points, yes. The We've talked about the stars, Melville, 
and Caffrey. Maybe it comes down to the performance of the other outside hitters. Chacon has had a tough night, hitting in the negatives to this point for FSU. And until late in that third set, Fisher had not been really an option for them, wearing 15 in white for UCF. She's up to nine kills, though, now after waking up late in that third set for UCF. But Fisher and Melville for UCF still combined for 17. Yeah. It's Peyton Caffrey who has 18 on the match alone. So she's allowing Chacon to just be herself and sort of be all those other things that she is for FSU and not have to carry a load offensively. What do we have, a center line violation? Play was stopped. Point, the point will be awarded to UCF. Was it for a center line violation or is it a replay? No, I think they're talking about a ball that was played over the net. Did that hit the antenna? I think the antenna was just shaking. I'm not certain. Again, though, a great look from our crew. It's 1-0 UCF in a must-win situation to keep their season alive. Down 1-2 now after taking the first set over in-state rival Florida State. Caffrey from the left. Great up, Kuchmaner, back row Fisher. Off the net, Caffrey. Kuchmaner again in back left. And Marie Watson, the ball just won't go down, will it, Missy? Because of some great defense on the part of FSU, not because of a bad swing, but we're oh, seeing yeah. some beautiful digs. Caffrey powers it through Watson and Lachey Harper. And Caffrey, who's looking angle there, just turns that one down the line. And the UCF block not able to hold those hands strong. You can see Watson there is in the, in the motion of pressing those hands over the net, but she doesn't quite have them set yet. And so Caffrey gets the best of her. 19th kill on the day for Caffrey. Wow. Right side, Anne-Marie Watson. She's been effective when they get the ball to her, Missy. Yeah, it's a really good look. That right-handed player on the right side. And then, of course, in Sable, they have a left-handed player. So two players who are very different to defend, which can be very effective. Here's Lachey Harper to serve. And we won't see more effect here in the middle. It's Wesolich again for UCF, number 21, who just was part of that ball that hit her. Wesolich only a sophomore out of Wildwood, Missouri. Serve forthcoming from Florida State's Lily Tessier. Back on the court for Florida State is Jasmine Martin. Two setter offense. Blocked back, played up by Fisher. UCF goes to the outside to Melville. Nice up, Chacon. Martin is blocked. Melville there at the left antenna with the stuff block as Wesolich was up on her right shoulder for the look. Yeah, Melville left all alone on this one, and make no mistake about it, look how strong she is up above the net. As she doesn't just get a piece of it, she turns it right back and down. It's really well played. Here's Amber Olson checking in and serving for UCF. In the middle, Martin, different look. Played up by Amber Olson. Out to Melville, has to tip it across. Back out to Caffrey. Caffrey calls everybody off, says, I got it. Nice double look there for FSU, but UCF wasn't fooled. Back row attack, Chacon. Melville took a swing at that, just yeah. a tip. Sable put it right in Tessier's lap. And I'm not sure that that ball would have stayed in bounds. However, it goes right at Tessier. She really just doesn't have time to get out of the way. Seven kills now on the afternoon for Ali Sable. One of the four seniors on this UCF squad. Missy alluded to before, a left-handed right side hitter. Caffrey down the middle, upped by Kuchmaner. Back row attack is money in the bank on the pipe for Fisher. Really good court vision out of the back court. You've said so many times, Tom, that you didn't expect Melville to take a swing, and she still takes a swing at some balls that you would think would be free balls bumped over the net. And she and Fisher both have really great court vision and ability to place the ball so well. Ooh, nice look. Her shoulders were facing away from her to the right. She came across her body, snapped it down the middle, did Emma Clothier. 
And don't forget, she's only a freshman. This is a young Seminole who has a really bright future in Tallahassee out of Carrollton, Texas. Seven kills for Clothier. Back set, right side, Sable. It flew past her left. She tried to get the right hand on it, couldn't do it. Timing wasn't there. Big smile on her face, though, knowing we'll connect next time. Yeah, and the way they run their offense, they do always have the same right side on the floor with the same setter. Yes. So you don't see a lot of misconnections. You know, they work together pretty regularly. Great save. Taylor Roberts, FSU. Sent right back by Wesselich. Chacon. Dug up. Coach Miner. Melville. Off the block attempt of Martin. Gets it down for her 13th kill. She's had to work hard. And it's interesting. It looked like... Florida State was going to run away with that third set. UCF really fought their way back into it. They're not able to come out on top. But here we march into the fourth set. UCF, UCF has not flinched. They just aren't going away. Melville already with an ace on the day. Again, that same look for Clothier. Back row Melville. But there's a touch of the net. It was long, but the touch of the net equals Melville's 14th kill. And I'll tell you what, Melville never takes a playoff. You know, and Caffrey as well, they're not just offensive players. They cover a lot of court. They pick up tips. They're so active. Unbelievable in this match with these in-state rivals. Both teams with two outside hitters that play all six rotations. And remember, FSU has won 17 consecutive against UCF. However, this is the first time ever that they have met in the NCAA tournament. Sable off the net. Dug up Roberts. Outside Chacon. FSU will play it back across. Free ball, Knights. Right side, Sable. Sable saved it. Can someone get there? No. Valiant effort by Kuchmaner. Just the determination and grit exhibited by both teams is amazing in this rally again. And a couple of UCF players looking a little tired, and rightfully so. These players go hard every single point. UCF with a two-point lead in a must-win situation. Down a set to two. Sable with the swing, powers it through. Canute, that's not easy to do. And there's the connection from the younger Olsen, Amber Olsen and Sable on the right side. That was the miss we saw earlier. That time a little lower, faster ball, and it gives Sable an advantage over the block. Kuchmaner to serve, came into action today, fourth on the squad with 16 service aces. Outside to Chacon, that was her best look of the day, but up to the task was Kuchmaner. Back row Melville. Stuffed back down by Harper. That's being on the spot, Missy. Yeah, it's a good put back by Harper because it was a great swing by Melville, and you'd hate for her team not to capitalize on it. So I like Harper went up to the net being aggressive. She immediately turns and points at Melville like, I got you on this one. Cor fourth kill on the day for Harper. Tough pass. Olsen goes outside, Fisher, Christina Fisher with the blast. And that's a really nice delivery from the younger Olsen. She was in the middle of the court, but she had a little hitch in her step there. I thought maybe she was going to back set it. Nice disguise look there before she sends it to the left antenna, and it pays off with a one-blocker opportunity. UCF on a 5-1 run to extend a lead to 10 points in this must-win situation. A freshman. And Inky. Yeah, who really surprised everyone, winning in 2016. Weren't able to go back to back in 2017, but as a junior class, they reclaimed that title, and now they're seniors. Can they do it again? People across the country are coaches. Thank goodness it's yes. the last year together yes. with that group, with Henson, Plummer, and the like. Tom, I take a look at the stat sheet here in this fourth set. Caffrey of FSU has taken 63 swings so far, and McKenna Melville 65. Whoever wins this one better hop in an ice bath tonight because you got to come back tomorrow and do it again. The stat that jumped out to me, Missy, when I looked at that, where we are in this match, Melville with 21 dips. Yes. That's she impressive. is all over the court. When the offense isn't working, she is still working. Yes. Love the way she plays. Canute with the kill. L does a good job finding Canute there in transition. They had three blockers up for UCF. And Canute just goes right off of them. She's already sixth in FSU history in block assists and total blocks. She's only a junior. A junior, I was going to say. Wow. 
FSU trying to crawl back in. 10-8, only a two-point UCF advantage. Dajanay up off the UCF bench. Right there where he can go the max, right at the 10-foot line. Sable from the right. Somehow Knute steered that up and over. Sable with the tip, will play it up. And we have a whistle, FSU in the net. Called on Chacon, I think. No, Knute, 13. And Tom, if you notice here, UCF has been able to separate themselves from FSU just a bit here, while guess who is in the back row? Peyton Caffrey, not across the front row for FSU, and that's when UCF has been able to make their move. The question is, will they be able to hold on to that as Peyton Caffrey moves to the front row? She's not on the floor right now. Aaron Olsen serves. Just check back in. Set to the outside, Chacon. Out to Fisher, who's been heating up. Chacon again with the roll. Fisher there behind the block. Melville from the back row, played up by Roberts of FSU. Here's a quick response from Harper to yeah. the ball back. Chacon dug up by Melville again. And the kill on the right side for Ann Murray Watson. And I tell you, UCF just not giving Chacon anything. She took three really nice swings at the ball over the course of that rally, and it was defensive play after defensive play. And then I like the ball movement by UCF on that last swing. They're able to work it to the right pin. Watson gets a really good look. Ninth kill for Anne Marie Watson. Canute on the slide play. Played up, though, by Kuchmaner. Who was that? Melville. Yeah. Out of the backcourt. Out of the backcourt, wow. not afraid to take a big rip. She has never seen a set she didn't like. And even if it's not a good one, she's still willing. 15th kill for Melville. Again, a five-point lead now for UCF. Chacon tries to swipe it off hands. Uh-uh-uh, Harper and Watson there for UCF. And Watson. Coach talked about her offensive progression, that she was a defender last year, and you are seeing the balance in her game this season as we've seen her be effective both blocking and killing balls at the net for UCF. That's Watson's fourth block on the The winner of this match will play the winner of Alabama State and uh, the team that this coach, Mary Wise, coaches. The Florida Gators, the 10th seed in this NCAA tournament. And a little delay, Tom, as Taryn Knute of FSU is being tended to some blood on the face. Nose, the trainer is taking like. care of that. Looked like her nose, but also looked like the trainer might be tending to her lip area as well. So when you play as high above the net as Knute and you block as well as she does, it, you take a few balls to the face. Ouch. That doesn't look like that's much fun for Taryn. As we've alluded to before, she's already sixth on the FSU blocking charts all time. And she's only a junior. She has the remainder of this year and all of next season to really take a blast at all the FSU blocking records. And uh, she's going to make her way back on the court with uh, an accessory, not the fashion accessory she wanted. <laughs> I tell you what, that's commitment right there. That is commitment. And these are the postseason honors bestowed upon the Florida State Seminoles. You see Knuth there. First team, all ACC. And the ACC season. Defensive Player of the Year, we said earlier. And she gets it <laughs> right on cue. Are you kidding me? Wow, that's impressive. And that's the first player, other than a libero, yes. to win. Yes, that's where I was going with that, Tom. Year. But when she has to play with this bandage to the nose, steps out on the court and immediately gets a kill, she just caused me to lose my train of thought. I, yeah. I don't know if you'd call that a bandage. It looks like <laughs> a, a cork to make sure she doesn't bleed. Anne-Marie Watson on the right, but FSU will keep it alive, of course. To the outside, to Fisher goes UCF. And Christina Fisher delivers 12th kill on the night. She's starting to heat up, Missy. We hadn't heard from her. She had a great first set. Second set, not really there. Middle of the third set. She's back. And she'll make the dig there for UCF this Canute. I mean, on the Canute attack. Nunji will get the kill there for FSU. We haven't Nunji, really called yeah, her name. very quiet today. Hasn't been real effective offensively, but FSU, their her first kill of the match. Thank you, as Tom verifies that. It is her first kill of the match. Wow. I can't take credit. Dan Ferran, our crack statistician courtside, updating us. 
Fisher there. Of course, we've mentioned she's a six rotation outside hitter for UCF. Melville the other. Ball is down, I guess Taylor Roberts. Yeah, it took him a minute to make that call. Enough. Yeah, it looked like maybe FSU had played that up, but of course UCF pointing to the floor like, whoa, 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 that one was down. And the swing by Melville on that ball to, you know, send it deep, but with just enough top spin on it to get it to drop, the way that drops in front of the defender. Yeah. She is just great hand-eye control. What a great serve. Pass will have to make the play on the ball after their pass came across the net from FSU. Caffrey swings, Caffrey kills. Number 20, sixth time this season. She's had 20 or more kills in a match. Caffrey in the front row, but already into right front. So this is her final rotation across the front row. And I really felt like Florida State needed to do some work closing the gap while hay. they had her in the, in the front row. Here's Lily Tessier serving. Fisher passes for UCF. Right side, Anne-Marie Watson. Great up. Caffrey with the roll. Anne-Marie Watson again. Up for Tessier. Caffrey again. I sound like a broken record. <laughs> and that time well off the net from Caffrey, and it looked like the UCF block was a little early, that they catch them on the way down. We talked early in the match about UCF taking swings from so far off the net. It was hard for that FSU block to get a piece of it. That time FSU swinging well off the net. Caffrey's 21st kill on the match. Her season high is 22 against FAU. Back on September 6th, here she goes again. Plays up the ball that was blocked back to her. And again. And this time she is blocked by Wesselich and Anne-Marie Watson. And Wesselich, that player who didn't even enter the match until the third set. And in the first couple block attempts she made, you could tell she just had to catch up with the speed of the match. When you've been standing on the sideline for a minute, it's very difficult to get out there and immediately find your groove. But now she's starting to look pretty comfortable. Amber Olsen checks back in and serves for UCF. Caffrey. Down the line, ties her season high, 22. And as a senior with your career on the line, what more could you ask than to go out and have a career performance like Peyton Caffrey has had so far tonight? That was her 69th swing. And we're in set four. Wow. It's a lot of swings. Melville. Sable played the ball up. Melville again, there's Chacon. Chacon has to reload and swing. Sable from the right. Back row, Caffrey. The other 15 will take a back row attack. One handed set across. Who's going to flinch, Missy? Sable with the tip. Martin with a great up behind the block. Caffrey from back right. Finally, wow. And Caffrey, and Caffrey, as you mentioned, Tom, she took her first back row attack down the middle of the court. She adjusted with the flow of the rally, moved into right back, the area that the setter vacated, and called for a ball out of right back. And she is looking for offense out of the back court. She has a really interesting approach out of the back court. She almost has like a crow hop in her approach. I mean, she comes and gets it. What volleyball IQ. Down the line, kill McKenna Melville. And both teams trading punches. Yeah, both teams having you know having to deal with the block of their opponent are finding some success down the line because cross court has been so well defended by the big block. Here's Melville after getting that kill to serve for UCF. Again, a must-win situation for UCF. Down a set, want to force a fifth. Sable right side touched, dug up by Roberts. Chacon. She missed the hands, trying to tool the hands of the UCF blockers. But it, yeah, trying to tool the hands or the idea there is swinging for that deep corner down the line. That's where teams have been able to avoid the big block. UCF now with a five-point lead as Melville will go to the right side beyond the end line now. Nice look to Clothier in the middle, a member of the all-ACC freshman team. But and look Clothier. who's back on the court. Yeah. Canute. Yeah. That spells trouble, doesn't it? 
and serving Madison Sullivan. Madison Sullivan, an interesting story. This senior from Jacksonville, the only Noel to have played and won a match in the NCAA tournament. She's coming to Florida next year, yeah. the UF College of Dentistry. Maybe she was consulted on that shot to the nose. Big stuff block for Canute. Up alongside was Martin. And you said it, Tom, look who's back on the floor, Canute, and that spells trouble. All of a sudden, there is not so much room to work with up there at the net. Canute's sixth block on the match. Fisher, Christina Fisher answers. And this just is like, where for UCF, all you have to do is play side out. Yeah. Just like Melville, though, they do such a great job of using the entire floor. We've seen them sweep, swing deep corners, excuse me, but they both have the ability to roll that shot in front of the defender. Two crafty outsides for UCF. All the shots. Canute. Pulls FSU within three. And with a nice pass, these FSU middles are so effective offensively. I think you get fooled by how good they are defensively, both Canute and Clothier. You think of them as defensive players, but that's 10 kills now for Canute as she's in double digits. Tarrant, Canute's season high is 12. She's done that three times. The last against North Carolina earlier in November, November 17th to be precise. Fisher with another kill. 14 on the day. And this is UCF saying, punch at us, we'll punch right back. Melville, Fisher. And realize UCF has already entered the tournament style play as they had to win a conference tournament yes. just to get into this NCAA tournament. So they've kind of already dealt with that mental block of one and done or win, win or go home. Fisher again, the senior wants to extend her season. Her what life. a beautiful look from the left side. Fisher's gotten better as this match has gone on. She was feeling out that block early, trying to see if there was any weaknesses in it. Now she's kind of figured out how to swing around it a bit. Last three UCF points are Fisher kills. That's a senior for you in postseason. Canute with a blast, but Guess Melville digs it down big. the line, Melville. And Watson finds a way to make that work. That looked like an impossible situation. And somehow Watson is able to get a swing at that ball, hit it off the FSU block, and get it to land out of bounds. This looked like trouble from the get-go, and Watson turns it into gold. Aaron Olsen serves for UCF. Canute has to readjust, just pushes it in back left. Henry Watson with the tip. Great one-arm save, Roberts. Chacon is blocked. And Marie Watson. I love that block of Watson alongside of Harper. It's such an aggressive block. They don't just hold their hands steady at the net, but there's a press action in their block. They are forcing the ball back in on their opponent. Set point UCF. The Knights want to keep playing into set five, but they'll have to wait another point. Point Seminoles. Seminoles, it's it's simple. Score six points. <laughs> or you're going to five. That's right. Here's Morgan Chacon to serve. That means Caffrey's in the front row. Probably the best situation Sir. for the Seminoles. Out to Fisher, goes UCF. And UCF will end it there. The senior, Christina Fisher says, nope, give me another chance at set point. I will take care of business. We are going to a fifth and final set. Florida State came back, took sets two and three. UCF, when it mattered most, they got quite the performance in the fifth set, in the fourth set. The fifth set will be the first team to 15 points, and of course you must win by two. And with the season on the line for UCF, number 15 in white, seven kills. But Melville kind of started that. She's had, let's see, 24 digs. Yeah. Wow. And Peyton Caffrey has tied her, season high. tied her season high with 22 kills. Those two certainly have not disappointed, and not just because of the offensive fireworks, but because of the effort that they have left on the court here today. 
They are playing just as you would expect any player to play in the NCAA tournament, like their life depends on it. And that is certainly the case right now for number 15 in Garnet right now, a senior for FSU. Starts in left front, absolutely no surprise. And Melville, guess what? In left front for UCF, it's a race to 15 times. And you got to have your best offensive player in the front row. Of course, Christina Fisher, I don't think UCF will lose anything when she rotates to the front row. She had seven kills in the fourth set alone. She has taken it to the next level, getting better and better as this match goes on. And I'll tell you who jumps out at me off the stat sheet is for UCF. Watson on the right side has 10 kills and she has six block assists. She's been in on six of UCF's 11 blocks. And guess what? UCF sits at 11 blocks tied with Florida State. An area where we knew Florida State would be strong, UCF has been just as strong. UCF led their league, the AAC, with three blocks a set. Yep. And FSU led the ACC with wow. three blocks per set. They're both tied at 11. It's the race to 15, and number 15 will take the first swing. And number 15 on the other side, Fisher will dig it up for UCF. What a save, Taylor Roberts. UCF goes to Melville, and Melville kisses it as Chacon cannot control. Really Chacon. not. Go ahead. Excuse me, not a great pass on the free ball. UCF, you yes. thought they were going to have three options, and they really didn't. And it was a one-option pass right back out to Melville again. I think if there were three options, maybe they would have spread it around, but it doesn't matter. Melville gets it done. Canute played up, though, by Olsen. Melville. There's Chacon. New career high for her and Diggs, Chacon. And that's out as Melville made a diving effort for it. Went across the net out of bounds. Melville's not able to keep it in bounds, but she certainly doesn't let it touch the floor. She doesn't let many balls touch the floor. The dig numbers are just drop dead as well when you take a look at them. We'll get to that point in a moment as Taylor Roberts serves. Back set, right side, Anne-Marie Watson. Just long. Ooh, that was tantalizingly close to that end line. Everything magnified in this race to 15. And there's going to be a challenge as to whether or not there was a touch on the block here. Let's go to Scott Snyder and our crew, see what looks they have for us here. They've been fantastic all night. Watch along with us as here is Emery Watson. Did it catch 19 there in Garnet? Did it catch Emma Clothier? To her left was Peyton Caffrey. I just don't see anything there that I think is going to cause that inclusive. call to be overturned. Yeah. yeah. Inclusive. This, I think, the best look. The pinky of Emma Clothier, 19 in Garnet, maybe in question. Maybe. Yeah, on that look. We're going to get a tighter shot. Boy, our crew is on it. Wow. Oh, I don't know. Wow, if there's a touch, it is a literally a pinky touch. I just. What great looks. Okay, the initial ruling, as we know, was no touch. Our crew needs, our officiating crew needs conclusive video evidence to overturn. Will we get that? And we. We only sit at 2-1, but remember, this is a fifth set, and it is a shortened fifth set, and every point is so important. We saw Susan Lowry moments ago up in the stand. She's right in front of our location as the down official Darren Clark takes a look at the DV Sport replay system to determine if there was a touch. UCF is saying, we think there is a touch from the FSU block. Either 15 to your left, that's Peyton Caffrey, or 19 to your right, that is Emma Clothier. Does it touch, scrape the right middle finger of 15 or the left pinky of 19? That's what you're looking for. I don't see it. We're going to get one more look. Yeah, I, I just don't see it, Missy. I don't, I don't think. Does the ball change its rotation 
after it goes by the FSU players. No. No, it doesn't. So the challenge is not granted. So Todd Dagene has used his challenge here in the fifth. Shaking his head. Again in serve receive. This is a testament to these two outsides. Fisher and Melville still in serve receive as part of the passing line. Melville swings away. Chacon saves it. Great save, too, by Aaron Olson. Caffrey with the tip. New season high. Adding to that. Make it now 24. Her previous was 22. And she hasn't been a big tipper, that's for sure, over the course of this match. But because of that, she's created that kill for herself. She's got the defense dug in, expecting the big swing. She likes to swing away. And there's another thing magnified in the race to 15, a service error. If you can get a block in this rally, maybe, you take a two-point lead, a three-point lead, excuse me, at 4-1. The service error makes it 3-2. And you give UCF back the serve to Drizzy Pass, who had a nice short serve in the last set. Caffrey on the outside is dug up by Pass. Melville down the line. We're tied at three. And in a court that is so hard to find a kill on with the way these two teams are playing defensively, it's that line shot. It's produced points here late in the match. And for FSU, Caffrey and, and their Chacon in serve receive. Caffrey, severe cut, played up by Melville. Tip shot, Melville off the hands. Look out, the setter got to it from her knees. Did Adrian L. What a play by Adrian L. From her knees. Wow, and are you kidding me by Peyton Caffrey who comes in a very tight set that is just completely broken play. Two blockers waiting on her, waiting on her. And this is just who wants it more. I mean, that is effort on the part of Caffrey. Yeah, and an effort on the part of L. Nunji, get out of my way. Yeah. One-handed set to Melville. And it's just long. Point for Florida State. How about the one-handed push set all the way out to the antenna there? Yes, that brought the wow from yours truly. Unbelievable. Crucial point here for UCF. Wants to get a point. Pull back to within one. Chacon's dig is near the net. And Lily Tessier thought she might play it out of the net, but could not. The defense we're seeing from FSU, though. I mean, they are just digging balls left and right out of the backcourt. FSU now over 100 digs on the match. UCF not far behind, approaching 100. Caffrey with the pass. It's going to go back out to Caffrey off the net. And it's long. Knocked the flag out of the line judge's hand, far side. We're tied at five in the fifth. Look at that line judge doing his job, make sure there's no footfall. There's that look. Her shoulders are perpendicular to the, the net, and she goes across her body, Emma Clothier. Only a freshman, a member of the all-ACC freshman team. Clothier in a tight situation. You got Peyton Caffrey out of, the, out of the left pin and not afraid to feed it to the freshman. That her 10th, tying her season in career high, the freshman. Melville with the blast. Back row Caffrey will just steer it across. Free ball for UCF. Double look. Melville played up by Roberts. Caffrey caught some net. Here's Melville, blocked, but played up by Kuchmaner. Kill for McKenna Melville. We're even at six. Who's gonna flinch, Missy? And the way they changed the tempo of the set over the course of a long rally. You know, that Melville was ready for that fastball, the communication that's happening in transition for them to be able to send that fastball to the antenna to Melville and for the timing to be there. It's just so impressive. Fisher back on the front row. Melville serves for UCF. Steered across by Martin. Free ball, UCF. Ooh, a miss hit there for Wesselich. FSU goes Chacon. What a save. Wow. Coach Miner. Oh, 
one called the other off, and then they both did play it. And I tell you, Lamero for Roberts. for UCF, Wesselich has a miss hit there, but she comes back and wins this as part of a big block. But the save by Kuchmunner there in, uh, in middle back for UCF. That middle back player is asked to run from sideline to sideline and cover that backcourt. It is a really difficult assignment. Opening match of the NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. Neither team wants to go home. I'm surprised the Knights stopped dancing because his team wants to keep dancing. They're up by one over in-state rival Florida State, a team which they dropped the last 17 meetings to. The first time these two squads have met in the postseason. The heat is on. It is. And here's Melville on the day. She's done a little bit. 20 kills, 25 digs. That's not too bad. And look at this, a different look. Jasmine Martin with the rip from the left. And one thing that FSU has always done so well is train their pin players to be comfortable swinging from both sides. Jasmine Martin will play at the right antenna for FSU, but in serve receive, they don't allow that to limit them. They still want their players to be confident swinging from both pins, and it pays off. Neither team wants to go home. The fifth tie of this fifth set. Back row attack. Melville. Stuffed back down by Ali Sable. Ali Sable in the kill. Boy, guys. Teams will exchange benches. UCF, the first team to eight. And that's when you change sides. And, Florida and so State. do all the benches. That's right. And Florida State right behind Four, them UCF at seven. What an incredible match we have seen this afternoon. We've seen it all. We've seen UCF come out swinging and take the lead. Florida State comes back and takes the lead at 2-1. UCF facing elimination, led behind their senior outside hitter, Christina Fisher, with seven kills in the fourth, staving off elimination to get to the fifth. And here we are, 8-7 UCF. I think it'd be more interesting if the benches had to stay where they were, like you see in basketball. <laughs> right. You gotta yell all the way across. To the right, Martin on the right this time. Fisher. Christina Fisher not wanting her senior season to end here in Gainesville against FSU. How about the ball control? She has to, she blocks it, has to drop low and play the ball up herself prior to them setting her there at the left pin, and then she comes up with a kill. I mean, that point was all Fisher. Florida State is challenging the previous play. For a Florida State is challenging the previous play saying there was a UCF net violation. And the coaches, as I watch uh, Todd Dajanay say to Fisher on the sideline, he said, did you, did you touch the net? And she said, no. She said, no, the ball rolled down my arm. And I popped it back up. And she's exactly right. But it's yeah. funny how honest volleyball players have become here. You know, before <laughs> the challenge playing. system, yeah, they used to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, coach. You know, that, I didn't touch that, you know. And, now that there's a limited number of challenges and coaches are very dependent on feedback from their players to know whether or not they should use their challenge, players have become very, very honest. And you saw some of the FSU players pointing up at the big screens above, but those are, those are not even high definition. No, I mean, it happened right in front of us, and I really didn't have any question, even live. I didn't think that there was a net violation there. The ball rolled down between her and the net. The ball was in the net, but I, I don't think she was. Chris Poole and his Florida State Seminoles trying to avoid what they've had the last two years, losing in the first round of the big dance. And this is the rotation where Caffrey's on the bench, where they take her out of the backcourt in favor of a defensive player, but they lose her offense out of the backcourt as well. Melville plays it up. Sable on the right with the kill. Three-point UCF lead. And I think that's a ball Jasmine Martin would like to have back. She just two-handed sent that ball over the net, a free ball to UCF and they choose to go back with it. Their left-handed player, Sable, and the timing and location of the set finally gave UCF an opportunity where Canute was not able to close. Timeout, Florida State. Chris Poole now out of his allotted two. Can UCF close the deal, or will Florida State come back? Don't touch that dial, stay with us. After this match, I don't know what can top action in Gainesville this weekend. Yeah. UCF and Florida State, like two heavyweight punchers. Both counter punchers, though. Both great on the defensive side. Yeah. And both with two good outside hitters. 
It's fortunate that it's the fans for the Florida, the home team's match, are starting to, to file in because they get to appreciate this great volleyball that we are seeing in round one as this is the match that officially kicked off the 2019 NCAA tournament. Whoa, look out. Canute just did a great job not going for a center line violation or hitting the net. And Melville the actually in position to make a play on that ball, but of course Harper doesn't know that. She sticks an arm out there. You can't assume someone's behind you, That's right? right? That's right. That's a difficult one. Now if you're Melville, if she has the energy, I don't know if this girl could have any energy, I mean trying to call her off, but it's that's just a really difficult situation. Fisher on the outside. Making 18 kills now on the day for Christina Fisher, the senior that doesn't want the season and her career in Orlando to end. And all AC, A A C, excuse me, that is so hard to differentiate between these two, and all A A C for the selection for the second consecutive year. Another senior, Aaron Olson serves. What a blast from the right from Canute. Here's Fisher again. Wow, what a great up from Sullivan of FSU. Right side, Anne-Marie Watson. Great block cover by the libero for UCF. Speaking about a great up, how about the up from Taylor Roberts of FSU to Fisher. Oh, and Sullivan cut off the libero. Roberts, who had a better play, I think, on the ball. I mean, this is fun volleyball. The effort defensively. I mean, these teams refuse. And look at that, a ball that finally goes for a kill. Two defensive players diving for that ball. 19 kills for Fisher. Oh, illegal contact, double hit called on Adrian L. We said earlier, this is a Florida State team who has been Florida eliminated Lawrence. the last two seasons in the first round of the last NCAA tournament. Last year by Florida. Yeah. Down in Orlando. And UCF on their home court was eliminated. Yeah. They were without one of their setters, Aaron Olson. She wants to advance in her senior season. UCF can almost taste it now. Right side, Anne-Marie Watson. What a save for the team captain, FSU's Sullivan. Back row, Melville. Sullivan there again. Chacon blocked, played it up though, did Chacon. Harper in the middle. UCF is one point away. Harper with a big block in that rally, and then they go to her offensively, and they haven't gone to the middle with Harper all too often, but in a really tight situation, fifth set, long rally, got to have it. The and senior with, setter, not afraid. And with Canute in her face, match point, UCF. Canute gets it across. UCF will have a chance, because Melville will swing. And from the right side, and Marie Watson ends the futility and frustration for UCF. They had lost their last 17 meetings with Florida State. But the Knights from UCF win this afternoon in a hard-fought five-set match to advance. And the back and forth play of that final rally kind of says it all. It wasn't as pretty as the volleyball that we saw all night, but it was the fight and the effort that defined this match. The ball just lands in the hands of Anne-Marie Watson, and she takes full advantage of it to put this one away after a great match from Watson, both offensively and defensively. Florida State season is done, and UCF will advance to second round action tomorrow night at 7 o'clock against the next match here in Gainesville between Florida and Alabama State. To watch this entire match on replay, as well as other matches on the SEC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Missy Whittemore, I'm Tom Collette. So long from Gainesville.